today's notes are going to be about flatworms. Flatworms phylum is the platyhelminth, and it means flatworm. We're going to try to knock out both flatworms and roundworms today, and so this might uh, be a little longer than they have been. Because of this, we will be on page 6 and 7 in your note booklet. Flatworms are, as they sound, flat, and they're worms, and so they have bilateral symmetry. Flatworms do have cephalization, and cephalization means that we're starting to see more specialized cells and tissues, and in this case, it's going to be nerve tissue at the head, and therefore, flatworms are the first organism to really have a true primitive brain so it's one of the first brains it's not a brain but it's like the first brain where we have a cluster of those nerve tissues in the head region and this word kind of helps us to understand that because the word ceph means head and so if we have a cluster of nerve tissues in a particular spot that's that development of that head region like cnidarians, they have a gastrovascular cavity for digestion, meaning the opening of uh, their mouth is also their anus and also is going to be utilized for reproduction. They do not have a respiratory or a circulatory system. Their cells are so thin, uh, their bodies are so thin that they exchange gases directly with their environment through osmosis and diffusion. Flatworms can reproduce both asexually and sexually, and most are going to have both male and female reproductive systems. So what happens, and you'll see this in a video clip later, is they basically fight over who's going to be the female, because the female will have to take care of the offspring. And so they do a thing called penis fencing, and we'll see that in the video clip where they, they fight and whoever... Uh, gets to inject the sperm into the other one is the male and then the one that got injected is the female and they take off and the female is left to raise the offspring. They can also reproduce asexually through fragmentation. So what happens is if it gets cut in half, so you can see here these dashed lines are showing like where it had been cut and this is a planaria which is a type of flatworm. If it gets cut then eventually um, what we see here is this this one growing you know over the course of so many days it will return to a normal um, planarian a normal flatworm there are three groups of flatworms the turbellarians these are the free living ones that reproduce in the manner I was telling you earlier where they might um, fight over you know who gets to be a male who gets to be the female they can be um, freshwater or marine in their environment there are also parasitic flatworms. These are tapeworms. Uh, one of the types is tapeworms. And parasitic, parasitic means it lives off of a host. So they are the parasite and it lives off the host. This is the head of the tapeworm. And what this does is it attaches to the inside of your intestines. And then these teeny little segments here are called proglottids. And those are basically complete reproduction, like has full set of uh, that organism so it can reproduce and so what happens is this head attaches to the intestines and then behind the head those proglottids start to um, expand and grow from there out and it will continue to get very long to the point of um, escaping out the anus of the species that it's in it can be humans it can be bears it can be a lot of different species that can have these and the, the genius behind this, especially with bears here, you can see this one's in the water. As this is dangling out the bear's butt into the water, it's going to attract fish and other things to bite off and get consume, you know, a, a segment of this. And because it has the, all the reproductive structures within each little segment, it's gonna be able to reproduce inside that fish and make uh, eggs and then the bear is going to turn around and eat a fish and start the process all over again. The last group of flatworms are the flukes and the flukes are also parasitic. These um, are specific examples of what we call a liver fluke and this 
liver fluke can be found in the intestines or in the liver of deer. So if you ever are out hunting and you are cutting open the deer and you find some weird kind of like nodules and it, things like burrowed in the liver of the deer, they may be um, deer flukes. We're gonna move right into roundworms. Roundworms are on page seven and the phylum is nematoda and that means thread-like. And as we can think about a round worm, it's kind of thread-like in appearance. Now, one thing I wanna make sure you understand is that a round worm, if I say this word to you, I imagine that a bunch of you think about earthworms. These are not earthworms. Earthworms belong to a completely different phylum that live on the earth. These are more parasitic in nature. Roundworms also have bilateral symmetry, but instead of having a gastrovascular cavity like the cnidarians and the flatworms, they have a what's called a pseudocelum. And a pseudocelum is a fake body cavity. So we have body cavities as mammals, and they have the beginnings of that. So they're kind of that transitional species or a group of species from just having a gastrovascular cavity where there's only one opening and that's both the mouth and the anus to having a true cavity where we have the mouth and the anus and so there's two openings and that food's going to move in one direction through that uh, cavity. Roundworms are going to reproduce sexually primarily and um, because of this they have separate female and male sexes so there's no more um, you know multiple sexes within one, one organism. And then the life cycle, as I was telling you, kind of with flatworms, they're going to have the same thing where they need a host. And there's typically an intermittent host species where, you know, in this case, the dog poops out the eggs and then um, it's going to be consumed either again by the dog because dogs eat their poop sometimes or um, another organism is going to eat it and then the dog could potentially eat that. So there's usually multiple hosts that are going to be involved in the life cycle of a parasite. There are two groups of roundworms, the pinworms and the hookworms. Pinworms and hookworms are both intestinal parasites of humans. As you can see, the pinworm is very small, less than an inch in size, and pinworms are going to be consumed uh, if you get like dirt underneath your fingernails or anything like that, um, and you, you know, put your hands in your mouth, you get those uh, little eggs inside of you, and then you're going to, um, they're going to develop inside your intestines. With a pinworm though, what they do is they, the female will, um, at night while you're sleeping, the female will come out of your anus and lay her eggs around the outside of your anus and then she'll climb back in there. And then as the worms develop, as the larva, the, those eggs develop into larva, um, they create this like itchy feeling as they're attached and they're there. And so you can see the picture here, the, the little kids scratching their butt and their anus because those worms there are causing that problem. Um, there are, you know, obvious ways to check for that. If you just go in there and take a look at the anus, typically what you'll see is, you know, some of these hanging out there. And that's a good sign that you have hook, uh, pinworms. Hookworms are a parasite that's also found in the soil, um, but you typically get them if you're walking around barefoot and you have an opening or a cut in your foot and those eggs get in there and then they uh, can dig around and, and hang out inside of you. So those are the groups for roundworms, and that is the end of our platyhelminth and nematode notes.